I want to go over one of my favorite techniques. It's a router based inlay that you can use to dress up all your projects. There's a couple techniques to learn, so let's get into it. You'll need an inlay bushing kit and you'll want to install that little brass ring that's the spacer for this kit and also make sure that your sub base is centered on your router. The technique involves following a template and you want to move in a clockwise direction. This first step we're just hollowing out the recess so you do start on the perimeter of the opening and then you just kind of continue working in a clockwise direction to carve out the rest of the waste. And we'll keep working on this inlay pattern. This is a trio pattern. It's just three small squares. But I have found that this technique is really clean. You might be tempted to use a hollow chisel mortiser to do the recesses. And I have tried that in the past, but I found that this technique with a router is just extra clean. And the only thing is you will have to either round your inlay or what I always do is square up the recess. I just find it a little more consistent to take it to a sharp corner. For the next part in the process, you want to remove that small brass spacer on your inlay kit. And just pay attention to staying in good contact with your template as you trace around these shapes. And we just work around the outer perimeter on this one. Pop off your template and be sure to label your parts so everything fits as expected. And the idea here is we'll add some painter's tape. And that'll just hold these squares in place as we head over to the bandsaw. You want to set your rip fence for about a quarter inch thick cut and just resaw this walnut piece to release the squares. Touch the back edges of the squares with a little sandpaper and this will just help to ease the fit. When you're installing these inlays there's really no way to test fit it. You just have to trust that the router has cut everything to exactly the right size. As long as your corners are squared up with that chisel, just add your glue and you'll feel it as it goes in place that it's going to be a good fit and just gently tap it home. Now these inlays do stand proud by design. We made sure to cut the pieces to be inlaid a little bit thicker and that just gives us some room that we can clean things up and sand it flush after the glue's dried. When working with templates, I use double-sided carpet tape quite often. It's really a good situation because it will hold things in place adequately, especially if you can just clamp it in a bench vise. Now in this situation, you won't have any woodworking clamps kind of getting in your way as you're trying to route out the recesses. So that's been a real advantage for me, just using the double-sided woodworking tape and a bench vise, especially for small parts. Now once in a while you'll want to vacuum out the recess and just check your progress. You'll see what you have left to route. Go ahead and clean up the rest of the waste and you're well on your way to finishing up this inlay. The slat inlays on this Limbert style fern stand were pretty interesting because we did the strip inlay first and then you mount your template to your workpiece and by doing this inlay routing you automatically determine the length of that strip inlay. So it felt like kind of a slick process because you weren't doing the square inlays first and then trying to size the length of the strip inlay. By doing the strip inlay first, everything just comes out automatically. Hey, good luck with your inlay project. We'll see you on the next one.